What's up guys, Thomas here, welcome back to the channel. And today we are taking a deep dive and taking a look at the specifications of the GEP RC 4K FPV drone. Let's see if these specifications make it the perfect first drone for you. Let's get into it. All right guys, so I have the GEP RC TinyGo 4K drone here. I just received this 20 minutes ago. I just did an unboxing video of all the parts that you see right here. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up above and below in the description so you can take a look at that maybe after you watch this video. So if you're watching this video, you're probably just like me, trying to get some more information on this drone and seeing which is the right beginner FPV drone for you. I know I went through that whole process. It took me over a month to research and then it took me another month and a half just to get this drone to my doorstep. So I have my phone here, not too many specs on the box itself. This is more of a detailed rundown of this kit and you can make your own determination whether this is the perfect drone for you. For me, in this configuration, this is the right config for me. Now, before I get into the specs, they do offer this drone in a 1080p form. I do have the 4K version of that, but they do offer a lower price, which is good, affordable uh, 1080p version of this drone. So let's get into the specs right here, uh, and then we'll try to break down what each spec means and do you really care about that or not. So. First thing I see here, it says the name of the drone is the Tiny Go. Uh, this one here, the frame itself is the GEP TG16. And what that means is that the frame is this part right here, which everything mounts to. You have the motor, you have the, the flight controller, you have the VTX, the transmitter, the receiver. Everything is mounted to this frame. This one here is made out of plastic. The model is the, I said TG16, and GEP RC does make that drone. What these manufacturers do is that they take an existing drone that may be the perfect drone for a beginner, and then build around it and see if it's gonna be a good kit or a good candidate to, to be a first drone for many pilots. So if you do wanna do some more research on this, there are reviews online that talks about this one specifically. What you really have to understand here is that there are different styles of drones. They have some that's exposed. This one here has, um, like a ducting or protection around the blades. So, which is good for, or perfect for indoor flying. So if it bumps into something or a person, it doesn't really uh, do much damage to the drone or to the person. Next thing we see here is the motor. Motor to motor is 79 millimeters and that's the distance from motor to motor. That's how they determine the size of the drone. In this case, it's just 79 millimeters. Besides that, you have the controller is the GEP 12A-F4. Now, that may not mean much to you. Obviously, the manufacturer, which is GEP RC, they will put their own control in here. The good thing about that brand, or this specific flight controller, is that it's tiny, small, it doesn't weigh much, so that's good. In this case, it doesn't have a built-in video transmitter, which might be a good thing. Besides that, you have the OSD, which is really cool. That says Betaflight OSD with an AT7456E chip. It just means that this thing is managed by Betaflight. There are other manufacturers that make also an on-screen display or another operating system for these drones, but Betaflight seems to be the unanimous choice to go for when it comes to management of these drones, these tiny drones. And that, all that means is that you can go to your computer, download the Betaflight, and then alter the parameters of this drone. If the drone seems a little sluggish or is too sensitive, then you can go in there and adjust it to change the parameters to fit your need. Let's see here, the ESC is the BL Haley S12A. I think that's the speed controller, I think. That really doesn't matter. That AV drone will have that. Then you have the VTX. The VTX in this drone is the 5.8G, 25 to 200 milliwatt VTX. And now the VTX is the, uh, the visual transmission system and that transmits through this little antenna right here. So that's the system that actually transmits this image from the camera out here to this antenna down to your goggles so you can see it. And all drones have that. The cool thing about this one is that this one is independent, it's separate, it's a separate VTX. Some other beginner drones have it built into the ESC board and stuff like that, but this one here is separate, so if it does fail or you wanna upgrade, then you can do that at a different date. In this case, it's future-proof, so you can always update it. If this is the drone that you wanna, I guess, build on in the future, it may not be cost-effective, but at least for me, um, if the board does fail, I can, I can easily change it. And with that said, you can also change the antenna for an upgraded antenna so you have a better range in the future, which is really good. 
The fact that it has 25 to 200 milliamp watts, that just tells you how strong the signal is, how far it can broadcast. Usually with radio stations and TV stations, they broadcast in watts. This one is milliwatts because it's a small powered device. But the higher the number, the further this thing can broadcast and the further your range um, as far as seeing the image when you do fly your drones. 200 milliwatts is the standard right now, especially for beginner drones. That's a really good number. You don't wanna have it at 200 milliwatts while it's just stationary. And in fact, that can actually burn your VTX or burn the board. Um, so what they do recommend if you are not flying this and you're gonna do some minor changes because once you plug the battery into this drone, it's powered uh, and it will be broadcasting the 200 milliwatts, which is the maximum power on this and that could fry the board. Uh, particularly because of lack of airflow. Um, usually when you're flying, you have the forward movement of the drone and then it acts as a cooler or cooling effect to cool the VTX. Also these propeller blades actually cool it while it's running. So if you have it stationary, it's a good idea to turn that down to 25 milliwatts if you have the option to do that. Now, the big thing here is the camera. It's the Cadex Lorix 4K 60 frames per second uh, camera. That's this main camera right here. Mostly every drone, with the exception of these little tiny drones here, they have a camera and that's used to bring the image to your goggles. Now, this goggles doesn't have a 4K screen on there, so why have a 4K Lorix camera? Well, this also has a built-in recorder in the drone itself. You can put a micro SD card in here and this thing will capture a 4K image, especially the fact that it's a 60 frames per second is a really good thing because these things fly pretty fast. Sometimes you wanna slow it down to capture the moment or how fast it's, it's flying through a tight space or maybe the mountains or wherever, a tree or whatever you're going through, little gaps. The higher frame rate is really good and makes the image look a lot smoother and that's pretty cool. And it does have adjustment here, two adjustment screws and those hard to see, but you can actually adjust the tilt of the camera. So usually to have any kind of forward movement of a drone, the drone has to be tilted forward to move forward. So as the drone tilts forward and moves forward, then this camera is gonna be pointed towards the ground. You don't want that, you want the camera pointed uh, ahead of you. So this can be adjusted. And if you are indoors flying really slow around tight spots, then you can lower the camera to see where you're going. Now the propeller, it's a pretty good uh, propeller. Gem fan is a 1634, four blades on each one, four propellers. And then we also have some spares, uh, which is included. So if you do wanna upgrade those, you can upgrade those or replace those. Uh, I don't foresee this thing here damaging the propellers because we have the propeller guards on here, but it is possible that you could crack a, a propeller. Uh, the motors, there are GR specific, GR1102, 10,000 kilovolt, motor so it's been pretty fast from my understanding that's that's average it's okay nothing crazy strong where you can the term they use is punch out of a situation so say you're dropping or diving down if you have stronger faster motors you can just punch out of that and get out of a bad situation now uh the weight the 4k is 54.8 grams as i said the first thing i was I noticed about this drone was the fact that it was so light. 58 grams is, is nothing. The weight or the threshold to require a registration is 250 grams. This thing isn't gonna be anywhere near that, even if you add these batteries to it. So these batteries are very, very small, very, very light. I would assume somewhere around under 100 grams or so. The controller here, uh, this is the GR8 controller. Very, very light. <laughs> uh, I, I don't mean to laugh at it. It's very plasticky, that's all I can say. I don't see a strap for it. I don't see it anywhere. So there's a hook for a strap if you want to use it, but there's no strap in here anyways. Besides that, it's the 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency. That's pretty cool. Decent range. Usually the lower the frequency, uh, the lower the waves, but the further the range, but that's okay. Something to notice here is the protocol, FHSS, and that's pretty much a protocol where the frequency changes throughout the use of the controller. So it kind of mitigates or reduces interference, which is really awesome. Uh, these small antennas, you really don't want anything distracting or interfering with your signal while you're flying an FPV. If you have an interference, the drone is just gonna crash or fail safe and just drop out the sky. You don't want that. So you wanna have a really good protocol. The problem with that is that it's not the most used protocol. In fact, a lot of drones don't use that protocol. We'll talk about that later, but that's, that could be a good or bad thing. The fact that a lot of drones don't use it is that you might have a good range and you might have less interference. But at the same time, this is a pretty good controller. I don't know if it says it right here. It doesn't say it, but this controller can be bound or bind to three drones, so two other drones. Um, if you have two other drones, you can use the same controller for those drones, 
But with this protocol, I don't know how many drones you can bind with that. So you're pretty much stuck with this controller for this drone. Um, eight channel, we talked about that. This is the eight channel. So each channel means it can do a certain task. So we have one channel for the throttle, one for the bank uh, and pitch, one for the yaw. Then you have these other modes here. Eight channel is pretty cool. That's uh, Some other drones have six channels. Um, the fact that it has eight, meaning you have a lot of options to upgrade and put a function towards those switches, which is really good. The antenna is built in, dual antennas, we talked about that. Uh, low voltage alarm below 4.8 volts, which is cool. I didn't know they had that in here, but you just open this up and put the batteries in here. Talking about batteries, it requires AA batteries, four. I don't know if it's good to have that. They're both positive and negative to that. We'll make another video about some of the features that's good about this drone. And some of the features that's not so great, um, but it does use AA battery, which is really readily available in any store. You probably have some in your, I have some in my drawer right now. You can also get rechargeable AA batteries, but sometimes a built-in battery is pretty cool too, uh, because it's usually bigger. The manufacturer makes the size right for the controller, so it has decent uh, longevity, but hey, AA battery, it, it's gonna work, it works. Now the receiver, uh, this is the transmitter. The receiver is also in the drone. It's a eight channel, which makes sense uh, because this is an eight channel transmitter. The voltage is five volts. The frequency is 2.4 gigahertz, which matches the transmitter. And the radar protocol is the same as the transmitter, FHSS. And that's GEP RC protocol. They, they chose to go with that. The range on this one is 300 meters. Um, 300 meters. Yeah, that's that's pretty far. You know, a football is what a football field is 100 yards. So 300 meters is almost triple that. Uh, let's talk about the goggles now. FPV goggles. That's a, a big selling point. This is the FPV starter kit, so it comes with the goggles. And there's multiple goggles, numerous goggles in the market. So let's talk about this one. This one here says the resolution is 800 by 480. And that talks about just the screen in here. Uh, the higher the resolution, the more crisp and uh, the video will be. Uh, in this case, I'm sure it, it'll be fine. In fact, this is the standard resolution for most box style goggles on the market. And they call it a box style goggle because it looks like a box. I did put this on earlier um, in my unboxing video and it fit pretty decently. Uh, the spot for your nose seems to be the point where it, it rubs against your nose, your face here, but the only problem I have is that I wear glasses and this might be an issue if I have to wear glasses, but I am a nearsighted person, so I can see very well near, but I can't see too far. So since this is close to my eyes, I probably wouldn't have any issues. And I also have contact lenses if I would do want to wear this, but just consider that if you do wear glasses, that that might be an issue. The built-in battery, it has a built-in battery, 3.7 volts, 2000 milliamp hour. So that should last 2.5 hours, which is pretty good. As far as the battery is concerned, the capacity is 530 milliamp hours. What that means to you is that uh, usually the higher the number, the higher the capacity, meaning you, you might have a longer flight time. So in this case, 530 is pretty decent. Some out there uses 430, 450. For a one cell, 530 is pretty good. These things are tiny, guys. Um, I thought they'd be bigger. These things are tiny. Not only are they tiny, they're light. Having said that, guys, and we're, we're making a, a conscious decision here, most of the beginner drones in the market are one cell. Usually the more cells they have, the more power is available to the motors, the punchier the motors are gonna be, and the faster your drone can be as well. So the fact that this one is a two cell, I can easily use this indoors. And if I wanna use this drone outside, I can, use the two cell and it should have adequate power to work outdoors as well. The charger, which is right, where is it? It's a GIP RC branded charger. It says LiPo and also high voltage. All right, so I didn't show you the bag. I have the bag here. It came with the kit. Uh, this is the, the carrying bag right here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, but that bag is pretty cool. It can hold everything. Obviously it came in that bag. So guys, those are the specifications of the TinyGo 4K. I think the specs are pretty cool. I know specs aren't everything, but a combination of all these specs, um, you can decipher if a two cell is better than one cell, if an eight channel is better than a six channel, you can decipher if a, if a 4K camera is better than a 1080p camera or not even that, a, 40, a 480p camera. Do you get two batteries versus four batteries? Do you get you know 300 or 450 milliamp hour versus 530 milliamp hour? So these are all things that I considered, the positive with the negatives. 
and this is the perfect drone so far for me because I haven't, I haven't even flown it yet. So guys, uh, that's it for the specifications of the Gep RC Tiny Go drone. I will be making a video of the setup and my first flight of this drone. Wish me luck. <laughs> if you wanna see that video, hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified whenever I do drop that video and it will be soon because I'm really eager and excited to fly this thing actually. If you have any questions about the specifications, I know I spit out a lot of things and couldn't actually spit, but I also spit out a lot of specs and numbers on here. If you have any questions on this, leave them down below. I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. I'm also learning as you learn as well, but I did want to bring a video so that the decision making process can be easier than the one I had when I was choosing a first time FPV kit. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Peace. Oh, out of focus. That's better. That would have been bad. Today we are taking a look at the specs of the <laughs> spec. Why not do? Why do I have to uh, enunciate so hard? All right. Oh, wait. Again, this. This. Uh, goggle style goggles. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the standard resolution for a Today we are taking a look at the specifications of the GEP RC 4K Tiny Go FPV drone. What? What did I just say? <laughs>